is Jack Lipton, the chairman of the Critical Minerals Institute. And I want to tell you a little bit about our summit coming up on November 9th in Toronto. My theme is going to be scalability of critical minerals. And I'll tell you very quickly what I'm talking about. In 2007, when I first looked at this topic and I coined the term technology metals, I was, I did some calculation. And typically for lithium in those days, between your personal computer and your cell phone battery, which is about all you had, uh, there might have been a hundred grams of lithium measured as carbonate in, in bulk. So each person used 100 grams of lithium carbonate. Now let's fast forward to the year 2022. What is the official demand for these materials? A car, an electric car, American electric car, will use between 80 and 100 kilograms of lithium carbonate. The, the stationary storage system will use three and a half times as much. So let's say for argument's sake, that a typical person with a car and access to alternate energy, uh, smoothed over by stationary storage, lithium ion batteries, will, will require the use of 500, 500 kilograms of lithium carbonate. Divide that by the 100 grams from 2007, and you, you begin to see a problem. Let's do that calculation. 500 kilograms is 500,000 grams. The 100 grams that were used in the year 2007 per person. So we have 5,000 times as much demand on lithium, just lithium. And at the conference, we're gonna discuss lithium, cobalt, rare earths, graphite, all, all of the EV materials. But keep in mind that between 2007 and 2015, uh, let's say, let's go to 2022, so that's 15 years. In, in that period, the production of lithium starting 2007 multiplied by a factor six. Yet the official demand, if all of us were to have an electric car and use only, only uh, non-fossil fuel generated energy uh, would be something on the order of hmm, 5,000 times that. So you can see there's a problem in scalability. In fact, the problem is severe and it is the, the most ignored problem today in critical minerals. We're gonna have a long talks about this on November 9th, but if, if my calculations are wrong, Somebody please tell me where, where the mistake is. It's not that it's not that it's going to take a long time to make this conversion to non-fossil fuel energy. It's that it can't be done. So are we I think we're going to live in a world of haves and have nots. But who's going to have these devices and and live in a in a world of non-fossil fuel energy is not really clear to me. So we're gonna talk about that. Thanks for listening.